uh, Kelly Blue Book and we are enjoying another test drive here. I think the last time we drove together was over a year ago for the, the pilot, right? In Kentucky. Yeah. Kentucky Derby. We were all there dressed up. You had a hat, like a bow tie and everything. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to, to the Derby in the pilot. We were we were Derby Dapper. Right <laughs> exactly. Uh, and now, over a year later, we're in a car that actually competes with the pilot. Direct competitor for the Honda Pilot. Uh, Mazda CX-9. It's a 2016, which is kind of weird to me because we're already like in the middle of the year. We should be like 17 or maybe 18. <laughs> Depending on we some. were on a press event two weeks ago for a 17 model. Exactly. So. so, I mean, I will never understand exactly how that works because, I mean, I think it's... I mean, there's some rules, but like they stretch them way out, right? Each manufacturer kind of makes up their own rules, really. Yeah, exactly. So, 2016 Mazda CX-9, and this car is very important for Mazda because uh, it completes uh, the full transition from the four years. Like, when was that? Like, almost 10 years ago when the, the company was sold? Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, like, was it 07 or something? It yeah, was approaching a decade time. ago. Yeah. This is the last car that really needed a full redesign to take advantage of their Kodo exterior styling with that kind of surface tension that they talk about yeah. and then all the sky active drivetrain technology to improve fuel efficiency so exactly. and Mazda has been what three years in a row the most efficient car manufacturer in the in the industry which is really amazing mm -hmm. taking the fact that they don't have an electric they don't have a hybrid they don't have a diesel right and they have a sports car I mean it's a right. small one but I mean and it's really a fascinating sky active is kind of fascinating because instead of relying on one big piece of technology like hybrid a uh, hybrid drivetrain or an electric vehicle it relies on a whole series of little things that yeah. add up to yeah. best fuel efficiency for a brand yeah dave um uh coleman right dave coleman yeah coleman the one of the main engineers for mazda i mean it's, it's really great at explaining really complicated things to people like me so i can people like me you can understand and he was talking about how they take on conventional ways to tweak a little things here and there to get more power more uh, more efficiency in every little part of the engine. Yeah, and the drivetrain, uh, the transmission, the aerodynamics, everything contributes to their fuel yeah. efficiency. Uh, so effort. this one has a 2.5 Skyactiv engine. Seven. Yeah, 227 horsepower, 310 feet of, of torque, and then uh, 21 miles a gallon on the city, 27 on the highway, and average of 23 for a car this big. Yeah. It's not that bad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a small engine, but they've tuned it to give you really good low-end torque, too, which is nice, because a lot of times you have the small engine with the turbo that a lot of car companies are using to have better yeah. fuel efficiency, but you feel it when you drive the car. You can tell the car doesn't really go until you're at a certain RPM, and you got to kind of floor it. This thing, you just barely roll into the throttle uh, at various speeds, and it just immediately moves out because yeah, the torque is Yeah, we're here in a little bit of traffic now, but if, if and you're going, what, 60? Yeah, 60 But if you just hour. push, like... I don't know. Just tap it, tap it a little bit more. You will get into seventy or eighty, like in no, no, no time. Yeah, it's really nice, and of course, it's also really uh, very Mazda-like in its driving dynamics. It has a very intuitive steering, a very uh, you know minimal body roll around corners, even for a vehicle this big, which yeah. is impressive. Uh, and it's, it has some fun. I mean, you, you you can have some fun driving it, even though it's a family car with three rows mm -hmm. of seating, and uh, you can fit seven people. I mean. The back seat mainly, I mean, this is the first time I actually hear uh, a manufacturer admitting that the, the third row is designed for kids. I mean, right. the whole way they tell, oh, you can fill seven adults. No, they, they told us now these were designed for little uh, little kids, and which is true. I mean, I mean, back there, even if you're not that tall like me, I mean, it'll be uncomfortable for a two hour drive. Yeah, it'd be a little cramped for a long drive. What's really nice though is the quietness too. Yeah. I mean. Here we are talking to a camera without any lavalier mics, and uh, I'm, I'm sure the camera's picking it up well. Absolutely, they well. have uh, laminated glasses in the two windows here in the front seat and on uh, the windshield, of course. Mm -hmm. And again, like we're going 60, and like you barely hear anything from the outside. Yeah, and when you look at the price, I mean, this car when it's loaded to the gills is like 45,000. Yeah, this every this one day. this one that we're driving is the Grand Touring. And the total price is forty four three hundred and ninety five. So I mean, like, it's got no, smart cruise control. I'm using smart cruise control right now. I'm not even touching the pedals. Yeah, um, and I guess there are no rules for a manufacturer who is not considered a luxury brand to go up there and compete with the with the luxury brands because this is not obviously. I mean, 
Mazda is not known for being a luxury brand, but that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, essentially they're shooting to be considered more premium than volume brands like Honda or Toyota, even if they aren't going to compete with like Audi or BMW. And I think they did a pretty good job. The materials inside this car, everything is Everywhere, like soft yeah. touch. Wood, everything. They admit also this is the first time that they have aluminum and wood. Real aluminum and real wood on the in the interior of the cabin. And I love the color of these seats. They're like yeah. this contrast in, you know, it's very not just nice, black. It's got uh, a nice color leather contrast. and even that what it's plastic. It's really really nice here in the front console. It's like soft touch. Yeah. In the right. side. I can't. I'm clicking. I'm hitting it with my wedding ring. It's not clicking. Which exactly. Plastic Where you hear like hollow hollow things in yeah. other cars. Yeah. So Carl, part of your job at Kelly Blue Book is analyzing all the numbers and how what's the value for the customers and all that. Right. This is, I mean, going back to that price, I mean, this is really, really a good value, huh? I mean, to get a, an equivalent, you know, three-row Toyota or Honda even, this loaded with technology would cost you a chunk more than, you know, mid $40,000. You'd be, you'd hit, you could hit 50 and above pretty easily. And any kind of premium vehicle uh, that had three rows of seats and this kind of technology would be, you know, 60 to 70, you know, easily. So they've really found a nice kind of sweet spot to have a very premium looking and feeling car inside and out that doesn't cost anywhere near a premium or even near a volume manufacturer like Toyota or Honda. And that's pretty amazing for a small company to be able to do that. I mean, now we're seeing mergers, especially in Japan with Nissan and Mitsubishi now. So mm -hmm. there's some predictions, I think, from, from your side that uh, a lot of companies in Japan especially are going to still consolidate, get consolidate and to, yeah. to a much smaller amount of uh, manufacturers. But I think Mazda seems to be doing really well. I mean, all the new cars are, are fantastic. I think they're really enjoying their autonomy now that they're completely separate from Ford or any other kind of large companies. And I think they feel like when they're left alone, they produce great cars. And I would argue they're right when you look at the yeah. products that are out right now. Pretty much the same case as uh, what happened with other former Ford uh, companies like, like Aston Martin, Volvo, Jaguar. Land Rover, Jaguar. Everybody's They're doing, all doing great. Really well. Ford is doing great too. Yeah. But uh, it's it's I mean it's amazing how how that has benefited everybody. I guess. So. Well, Ford just didn't have the resources to invest in all those premium brands yeah. and its and itself, and it knew that, and it was wise to to let the premium brands grow, go. It's kind of sad now because they do have the money, and I bet I you know. they. they bet, I'm sure they wish they still had control of brands like Volvo well, and absolutely. Mazda because yeah. they could have really, you know, invested. Aston in them. Martin. Yeah, those are premium brands. Land, Land Rover and Jaguar. These are you know historic brands that Ford owned at one point, but they had to take care of their own house first. They you know, get their own house in order, so they had to let all the other brands go in the mid. You know, in the, yeah, whatever, very interesting how the, the automotive industry turns around. Like not in a very long time. I mean, because we're talking about only ten years. Yeah. Yeah, no, in 2010, this the things were still looking up. Oh, there's my automatic brake control stopping me. How was it? I mean, we, it was fine. The car in front of us stopped, like, not suddenly, but like, kind of like we maybe weren't paying much attention. Yeah, well, it was getting ready for a left hand turn, and I saw it slowing down. I wanted to see what the system would do, and it, oh, okay. it braked. It, it slowed down without me having to worry about hitting the brake. So. So that's uh, another thing that people should consider, I think, when they when they go to a dealership and start looking at these new technologies. I mean, this really work. And like especially that feature that like automatic braking. I mean, it's something that is going to avoid a lot of accidents. Small accidents maybe or big ones too, but like it really works well. Huh? And it saves a lot of money because all I of know. us ultimately we all are somehow paying for every time there's a rear end collision with the higher yeah. insurance rates and repair work. So if those things start to go away to a large extent because of brake mitigation, that's going to save everyone a lot of money. Right. Well, uh, Carl, thank you again for your time. Uh, we're going to drive back to San Francisco and uh, I guess drive it in the other part of the element, like the traffic in San Francisco to see how it feels. Yeah, we're still in picturesque Marin County right now, but it won't last forever. Eventually we'll be in nice, nice uh, urban traffic. But that would be also, I mean, it's, it's interesting to, to drive in that kind of situation because, I mean, that's where most people drive the cars. That's where you'll be driven, yeah. And, and again, we drove in that coming out and it felt great there too. You don't have to go out to a twisty open road to enjoy this car. It still has a smooth, quiet ride, even when you're in the city driving around, which is where people will be driving the most of the time. Exactly. Okay. Well, thank you, Carl, again, and uh, we'll see you soon. Maybe Great hopefully talk to you, Javier. less than a year from now. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We're going to wait another year this time. Thank you.